Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be doing an NCLEX review over precautions, specifically standard precautions and transmission based precautions. And as always in the YouTube description below or at the end of this video you can access the quiz that will test your knowledge on precautions. So let's get started. Okay, on the NCLEX exam you may be asked some questions about precautions and some things you want to pay attention to during this lecture is especially about these transmission based precautions like how are they transmitted specifically the airborne the droplet or the contact and um, what PPE is required for each that you have to wear at all times and the disease is included in each category. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this and I'm going to give you three mnemonics on how to remember contact, droplet, and airborne, what diseases are included in each of those precautions, and what type of PPE you wear. And that mnemonic will include all of that so you can move on and study other things and have this behind you. Okay, so first let's start out talking about standard precautions. Okay, standard precautions are precautions that we take with every single patient at all times because we don't know what they have and they could potentially have something that we're not aware of yet. So um, we do this to protect ourselves and to protect other patients. Now if we suspect or know that a patient has a infectious disease, we will add on the transmission based precautions. Like we'll put them e either in airborne if they have chicken pox or droplet if they had whooping cough, which is pertussis. So we would do that and follow, keep following our standard precautions because there's some special steps that we want to take when we put them in either airborne contact or droplet. Now, some standard precautions include performing hand hygiene, wearing appropriate PPE as needed, how to handle patient equipment, injection safety practices, environmental cleaning, respiratory hygiene slash coughing etiquette, handling of laundry, and patient room placement. Now let's look at some highlights, specifically the hand hygiene and the PPE. Okay, first hand hygiene. Hand hygiene will be performed by you before and after patient contact. And you'll perform it after you wear gloves and if you touch any surfaces in a patient's room because they could be contaminated. And whenever you perform hand hygiene, you will either use soap and water or hand sanitizing gel. Now, there are some instances where you will only use soap and water. And this includes when your hands are visibly soiled, before eating or touching food, after using the bathroom, or if the patient has a diarrhea illness like C. diff, the norovirus, or the rot rotavirus. Now let's look at PPE. PPE is personal protective equipment that you will use as needed to protect your skin, clothing, or mucous membranes from like potential splashes. Because again, we don't know what this patient has. So at all times, for standard precautions, we're going to take the necessary precautions to use the right type of personal protective equipment to protect ourselves from potential um, maybe um, splashes from blood or getting mucus on us from suctioning or something like that. And some types of PPE are gloves which um, are needed if you're coming into contact with any types of fluids like vomit, stool, urine, mucus, and blood. Gowns, which are needed if there is a potential contact with fluids or blood that could get onto your scrubs or clothing. Goggles, face mask, or shield. And this is needed if there will be any potential contact with fluids or blood, like the patient starts coughing or vomiting while you're suctioning them or providing mouth care. Okay, now let's look at transmission-based precautions. We just covered standard precautions, but now our patient is placed into one of these precautions. And based on whatever it is, there's gonna be some special things that we're gonna do. So let's look at airborne first. Okay, how are airborne diseases transmitted? Okay, they're transmitted when a patient coughs or sneezes, whatever 
gets a respiratory droplet to come out and in that respiratory droplet are germs and these germs are special types of germs with airborne and we'll take chicken pox for instance so this person has chicken pox they're coughing they're sneezing getting all these respiratory droplets out everywhere well what happens is normally like in droplet precaution diseases the droplets will dry and the germ will die say like it was a pertussis germ it'll dry after that droplet dries over time but with airborne and um, whenever the person sneezes, that droplet comes out, that germ survives that drying out process and actually turns into a droplet nuclei, which is a very, very small residue particle that is going to stay and float in the air. And it's just waiting to be inhaled. And that's what makes it so dangerous and why you have to wear a special mask with this, an N95 mask, because the particle is so small you can't see it. And this person has to have special ventilation in their room to um, clean the air out because these particles stay in there. And the transmission is through inhalation. You inhale it, it goes down into your respiratory tract. It, um, starts to live in there and grow. So it's different than droplet because droplet, these diseases will enter in through your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your mucous membranes for you to in get infected with it. So that's why we have to take some extra precautions with airborne and why it's different. Now, some diseases that are included in airborne are chicken pox, which is also called varicella, um, disseminated herpes zoster, which is also known as uh, shingles, and this disseminated is a widespread infection of this all over the body. Um, also measles and tuberculosis. And it's important to note that chicken pox and the disseminated herpes zoster, the patient will also be in contact precautions along with airborne precautions as well. So with those two, remember that. Now let's look at a mnemonic to help you remember what diseases are in airborne and um, what special PPE you have to wear at all times with airborne precautions. Okay, this mnemonic says, airborne chicken number 95 dissected her tubby mealworm. And airborne is just telling you it's the airborne precaution. The C in chicken represents chicken pox. N in number and 95 represents the N95 mask you have to wear. Dissected her represents disseminated herpes zoster. Tubby rep represents tuberculosis. And then mealworm represents measles. Now with airborne, you want to always wear the N95 mask at all times and follow the standard precautions. So you will select your other types of PPE as needed based on what you're doing in that patient's room. Also, this patient will be in a special room with special ventilation, an air room, which is an airborne infection isolation room, also called a negative pressure room. And what happens is that it keeps the pressure lower in the patient's room than the outside room. And, you will and it will perform six to 12 air changes per hour to keep those residue particles, droplet nuclei, as low as it can. And the door needs to be closed at all times because those particles can get out and float around and someone else can get it. And uh, transport of this patient has to go to another testing part of the hospital and um, see if you can get it by bedside so someone can come do it because it needs to be limited um, and limit that. And if the patient has to leave the room, uh, they need to wear a mask, a surgical mask. Now let's look at droplet precautions. How are these diseases transmitted? They are transmitted when the person coughs, sneezes, talks, etc., produces that respiratory droplet. Now, these droplets are a lot larger than the droplets with the airborne, and they travel less distance and um, they fall, usually about three feet. Remember, three feet is the magic number with this, they travel that far. And how they infect people is that these droplets go into the eyes, the nose, or the mouth. And diseases included with droplet are diphtheria, the pharyngeal kind, epiglottitis, flu, meningococcal, 
disease like sepsis, pneumonia, or meningitis, mumps, pneumonia, mycoplasm pneumonia, parvovirus B19, also known as fifth disease, pneumonic plague, adenovirus, streptococcal pharyngitis, whooping cough, also called pertussis, rhinovirus, scarlet fever, and German measles, also called rubella. And it's also important to know on this list that influenza, the flu, and the adenovirus, the patients are also in contact precautions along with being in droplet precautions. So let's look at pneumonic to help you remember all of those diseases because that's a lot of diseases to remember for droplet. Okay, so this pneumonic says, whose adjustable droplet mask stops scary pneumatic fluid parasites plaguing, plaguing distinguished German men? My epic mom's Rhonda. So let's analyze this, okay? Whose, that represents whooping cough. Adjustable, that represents adenovirus. Droplet is the type of precaution we're dealing with. Mask is what you have to wear at all times when providing care for this patient. Stops rep represents streptococcal pharyngitis. Scary represents scarlet fever. Pneumatic represents pneumonia. Fluid represents flu. Parasites represents parvovirus B19. Plaguing represents the pneumonic plague. Distinguished represents diphtheria. German represents German measles, also called rubella. Men represents the meningococcal diseases. And remember that with sepsis, you let the E in sepsis help you with this part of this mnemonic of men. Um, M for meningitis, this M. And then N for in the part of pneumonia. So you remember that there's three and the word men will help you remember what three. My is mycoplasm pneumonia. Epic for epiglottitis, mums for mumps, and then Rhonda for the rhinovirus. And you'll want to remember that while providing care to this patient, you will always wear a surgical mask at all times. And of course, follow the standard precautions with this patient. So for instance, say that you, um, this patient is in droplet precautions and you need to provide mouth care to them. And you know that droplet precautions with this, this patient, the respiratory droplets have a germ. If they get in your eyes or your nose or your mouth, you can get this. So since you're going to be really up close in that patient's face providing mouth care and they're going to be coughing and gagging, you'll want to wear your mask because that's what you're going to wear all the time, but you'll want to throw on some goggles or a face shield. Of course, wear gloves and a gown because um, you don't want to get any of those droplets on your body. Okay, um, with this, there is no special air ventilation required because it doesn't produce that droplet nuclei, those residue particles like how that happened in airborne. The door can stay open with droplet precautions because remember, um, the droplets go for three feet and fall. Um, keep visitors and, patient, and other patients away from the patient about three feet or more. And if they are to be transported somewhere for testing, they, you'll need to warn the area that they're getting a patient in droplet precautions and the patient will need to wear a surgical mask during transport and while they're in the other area. Okay, now let's look at contact precautions, our last one. Okay, these diseases or organisms are transmitted from direct or indirect contact from the patient or something the patient has touched. So their environment is a big indirect place that you can pick up whatever germ they have. So not only touching the patient, but everything that the patient has come in contact with. And these diseases include medication resistant diseases such as MRSA, VRE, extended spectrum beta lactamase producers, or Klebsiella pneumoniae. Also, diarrhea infections or of an unknown origin. And those diarrhea infections can include C. diff, norovirus, or the rotavirus. Also, one you wanna keep in mind is hepatitis A. And if the patient is diapered or incontinent of stool, they'll need to be in contact precautions because hepatitis A is transmitted through the stool. Okay, also skin infections like impetigo, lice, scabies, herpes simplex, chickenpox, skin diphtheria, 
or shingles. And remember that patients with chickenpox and disseminated herpes zoster are in airborne precautions along with contact precautions. And wound infections with excessive drainage or the staphylococci. Also, pulmonary infections like RSV, parainfluenza, and eye infections like conjunctivitis. And a mnemonic to help you remember that is Dawn Medical Glove Slash Gown with every contact precaution session. And Dawn will represent the diarrhea infections, medical will represent the medication resistant drugs, glove slash gown is what you will always wear when in contact with these patients, with represents wound drainage, excessive wound drainage or staphylococci. Every represents eye infections like conjunctivitis. Contact is the mnemonic, it goes along for contact. Precautions represents pulmonary infections like the RSV or parainfluenza. And S represents the skin infections like impetigo, lice, herpes simplex, and things like that. And remember, you will always wear gloves and a gown at all times when providing care to this patient and follow standard protocols based on what you'll be doing with that patient. And um, the patient, it's best for them to be in a single room or if you can't get them in a single room, group the patient with another patient who has the same disease. And again, with C. diff or norovirus or the rotavirus, you have to perform hand hygiene with soap and water. Hand sanitizer does not work. So if you see a test question and it says, patient has C. diff, um, you're done providing care, you remove your PPE, what will you do next? And you know it's hand hygiene, but you will wash with soap and water, not hand sanitizer. Okay, so that wraps up the NCLEX review lecture over precautions. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.